Okay, finding all nth roots. So we're going to use um, a theorem called De Movier's theorem. I could be butchering that name. Hopefully I'm not. Um, and here's the theorem kind of mathematically written below that when you've got here, let me do this for just a second. If you all have all of this to uh, a one over n, then you're going to write it as r to the one over n times cosine theta plus two pi k all over n plus i sine theta plus two pi k all over n. So you have to know what each of those those parts mean. So I would fire you. It'd be a good idea to go to find uh, a video just on De Movier's theorem because I'm going to show you how to use that theorem to do this. Okay, so they give it give all they give us is that we have i plus root th i root three, which when you write it in the a plus b i form, is zero for the a plus root three i uh, for the b. Now to use De Movier's, we need to find the r and the theta, because um, we're going to use that theorem and then convert all of the everything back to a plus b i form and if there's if the nth root is five that's what the n represents how many roots so it's the fifth root there will be five answers these are a pain in the rear there it's not that they're super difficult once you get the rhythm it's just that they're they're a colossal pain okay so we find r by taking, remember, r is the square root of a, in this case 0, plus b, which is root 3 squared. Well, root 3 squared is just root 3. Root 3 plus 0 is just root 3. So that one is pretty easy. We know r. And to find the theta, well, normally you do the arctangent y over n, but I'm just going to plot this point. Remember, we can also plot that point. And if our a, usually our x, is 0, and our b, usually we think of y, is root th 3, we just go up root 3 height, and that's our point. Well, on a polar graph, that, that angle is pi halves. So I didn't even worry about the arc tangent. I just graphed the point to figure out where we were on the graph. So our theta that we're going to be using is pi halves, but because it's easier to deal with degrees, I'm going to use 90 degrees because it's way easier using the calculator. So here's our r. Here is our theta. And then, so the k is going to represent the number of times we find our roots, right? So for k, we start with 0, oops, and we count until we have 5. So 0, 1, 2, that's 3, 4, 5. So our k is going to be from 0 to 4, and that will represent our 5 roots. Okay, so I covered all that to not completely freak you out, but I'm sure you're still a little bit freaked out. Okay, we are four minutes in and now we're just getting started. Well, if my technology will, I'm gonna pause it. Okay, I got that out of the way. So remember, it's r to the fifth root, right? So root three to the one over five times cosine we have theta plus 2 pi k all over n. Remember, our n is 5 and our k, so we'll start with 0. So 90 degrees, instead of 2 pi, we're, we're using degrees. So 360 times k, and all of that is over 5. Well, 90 plus 0 is 0. 90 divided by 5 is 18 degrees. So we have root 3 to the 1 fifth power times cosine 18 plus I sine 18. Now you're going to type that into the calculator. Um, 
Uh, and if you get stuck on how to do that, I'll show you um, in class. So you're going to have to be careful, but remember, well, each calculator is different, but you're going to type that in. And when you type that into the calculator, for the cosine value, the fifth root of the root, uh, root 3 times cosine 18 is 1.06, and root 3 to the fifth power times sine of 18 is 0 0.34, and don't forget the i. All right. So I'm going to cover all that up. And remember, this first time the theta was 18 degrees. All right, so now we're going to plug everything in. Root 3 to the fifth power, cosine 90, 90 degrees plus 360 degrees times 1. Our k is now 1, all divided by 5. Well, 360 plus 90 is 450, 450 divide 5 is 90. Oh, darn it. And remember, cosine 90 is 0. Uh, any number times 0 is going to be 0. So when we look under here, there will be a 0 for the fifth, fifth root of root 3 times cosine 90 there will be a zero and sine of one one uh sine of 90 degrees is one so whatever this equals in the calculator times one will be our answer so there we have it zero plus 1.12 i all right now we're going to do our third k our third k is two so our first angle was 18 degrees. Our second angle was 90. Huh, that's a difference of 72. I bet if we add 72 to 90, our next angle will be 162. And if we add 72 to that, we'll be at is that 234. And we add 72 to that, we'll be at 306. What do you bet that that's going to be the system? And if that's the case, once you figure out the pattern, you don't have, you still have to write this down, but you can just kind of know what it will be. So now we have 360 times 2 is 72. Uh, I mean, 720. 720 plus 90 is 810. 810 divide 5, you guessed it, 162 degrees. And then when you multiply this times cosine of 162, you get negative 1.06. And then the fifth root of root 3 times sine of 162, you get 0.34i. All right, so now we're going to keep going. That's three of our roots. Now we have to do it when k is equal to 3. Remember what we said a minute ago. When we started off with 18, then 90, then 162, we just keep adding 72. So our next one should be 234 degrees. And when you multiply all that out, divide 5, it is. And so the fifth root of root 3 times cosine 234 is negative 0.66. And fifth root of root 3 times sine 234 is negative 0.9i. And remember, these are about, um, both of those are about, they round to those problems. And then when we plug in 4 for k, where we add 72 degrees, we get that 306. And when we multiply it out, that was a 6. I started to put 5. Positive 0 0.66, subtract 0 0.9. Uh, All right, so we took an A plus BI. We converted it to R cosine theta plus I sine theta. And then we ap applied de Movier's theorem. 
And once we did that, we multiplied each piece out to get our five roots. So there's our K4, our K, our KS4. There are our five roots. All right, that's it. This is a long one. Sorry about that.